Okay, welcome to our uh, third cross-company community manager call. As uh, those of you have been here already, uh, we are talking about communities in the social internet of different companies, mostly in Germany by now, but maybe in the future also internationally. For sure, we have international guests here. We've had international guests here. And um, in spite of the fact that we are from different companies like Bosch, Daimler, Scheffler, and so on, um, uh, we see whenever we meet internal or corporate community managers, we see that they all have the same or very similar challenges. Um, the most questions that they, uh, the most frequent questions that they ask are how can we use communities best for collaboration or how can we drive members to be more active and what measures should we take? And uh, I think especially the last question um, is what we see today. There will be uh, um, an answer from Scheffler, a toolbox for community managers uh, that will be designed to make community managers, uh, uh, community managers communities easier. But let me, as I said, we are from different companies. So if you want to contact us mostly on Twitter, we are all on Twitter. Uh, these are your hosts. Um, I'm Arvin, by the way. Uh, but you heard of already Simon, uh, Rebecca is in the call, Steffi. Uh, I don't know if Stephanie and Harrod are not uh, here today, I think. Um, and I think Moni either. But um, what will be our program today? Uh, yeah, what will be our program? Um, should we say something about um, Zoom before? Oh, no, I think it worked in the, in the last time. It's just a video conference tool. You have the basic features, you have a chat uh, you can use. And uh, later on, we will try for the first time to use a feature called breakout rooms. So we will split you up in groups of five to discuss what you've heard. We hope that it works. We will see. But uh, if you have any problems with the tool, just post a problem in the chat and I have an eye on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. And just one uh, legal information, we also included it in the event information. Um, as we are from different companies, we need to abide by uh, the antitrust uh, code of contact. Uh, so if you might want to know more of that, we shouldn't be discussing uh, service quality products, compet competitors, um, whatever. We should only talk about communities. Um, so keep that in mind when we will proceed uh, to discussing uh, communities later on. Okay, let's have a look. What's the program for today? The first half until about 4.30. Um, there will be Katrin and her colleagues telling us about uh, their community toolbox box and how um, uh, Scheffler um, applied it, how it brought benefits. And then uh, after half an hour, it will be your turn. So we will uh, split up in different groups. We will be able to discuss what tools you use, what you should, uh, what you recommend. And then we will collect it all together using Mentimeter and uh, discussing everything together. And we will create a list of our crowd wisdom, of our crowd wisdom, <laughs> of our crowd knowledge to provide it to other community managers and everyone who is here. Okay, uh, Kat, uh, Katrin and her colleague Sandra and maybe another colleague. Uh, it's your turn now. Yeah, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Simon, have you unmuted me? Yes, we hear you. Yes? Okay, great. So, hello again. Yeah, just a short introduction of myself. Um, I'm the project uh, manager for our social collaboration intranet at Scheffler, um, which we have uh, started to roll out uh, in 2017. So now we have it running since two and a half years. Wow, well, quite, uh, quite long now. And yeah, well, the communities of practice, um, when you go to the next slide, please, Simon? Yes, I do. 
Great. Next one also. <laughs> All right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so we have different use cases in our social collaboration intranet. Um, uh, we use it uh, really as our global information platform. So we call it um, department storefronts where all the departments provide their public information. Then we also have team collaboration groups where people um, can work together privately. And we also use it for leadership communication. Um, but uh, the use case we want to talk about today is knowledge management. So therefore, we have recently um, developed this um, community of practice guides. So we see it as a handout, as a checklist, as a guideline, as help for community managers um, who want to start a community. And Simon has helped us creating um, this. And currently, we are in the pilot phase. So we have around five pilots. Um, who are using the guide already, who have started to, to establish, to set up their communities. And the pilot phase will um, end uh, or will be finished end of November. And then we will start the huge communication campaign to roll out the guide for everybody who is interested to start a community for Scheffler um, for knowledge management. Um, we already uh, know um, the method networks of competence within Scheffler, so this was used in our old internet, but um, yeah, uh, it was mm, yeah not really with, on a on a, a state of the art tool. But now with our new social collaboration internet, we have new functionalities and we have a modern tool um, to to run communities. Um, yes, and the objective of this community of practice guide is that we want to encourage our employees, our colleagues to, to share their knowledge, um, to develop um, knowledge together with other experts. And we also want to bring experts all um, across the world um, together. Okay, next slide, please. Um, yeah, uh, especially important for us, um, our, our leadership principles, which are um, trust, transparency, and teamwork. And um, I guess that's crystal clear that these leadership principles are the perfect basis for social collaboration intranet and for knowledge management. And yeah, so the teamwork, trustful teamwork in cross-functional communities of practice is perfectly supported with our modern intranet, which is called Scheffler Connect. <laughs> okay. That's it from my side. Uh, Simon, we can't hear you. So now. Uh, yes, perhaps a few thoughts up front before we have a look at the uh, pilot cases, what communities of practice are. Uh, it's a pretty famous method in the field of knowledge management since the mid of the 90s, I would like to say, and we saw that uh, with the emergence of enterprise social networks uh, in 2010, 2011. Uh, in a lot of organizations, communities were just like groups in Facebook. It was, was just a place in, uh, in a social network without any methodology or roles or anything behind. So it was important for the guide to have a clear definition of uh, what a community of practice is. And uh, what Katrin told in one of the first slides that there was a, a network of competence approach where also the, uh, the uh, method communities of practice by Etienne Banger, McDermott and Snyder was used to just reuse the definition that was used there. So in this sense, a community of practice is a group of people. It's not a place in a system, but a group of people who share a concern or passion for something they do in practice. That's the practice part. And uh, who learn how to do it better as they interact regularly and the interaction can be face-to-face -face or it can be virtual. It depends on the size of the community, on the global distribution and so on. Now I won't go through all the uh, features of these communities. We just put you a link here to the uh, introduction to COPs by Etienne Wenger. So if you want to, you can have a deeper look and, and follow this link and you get a PDF document. 
Uh, we also have a sort of a small role model inside this community. Uh, of course, the, the biggest part here are the community members. Uh, and perhaps one or the other of you have heard of the 99-1 rule, or the 1% rule by Jakob Wilson. It says that only a very small percentage of the people in the community is really active. Like the German Wikipedia is written by about uh, 7,000 people with around 200 million people living in Germany, Austria and Switzerland. So if you have a community of 100 people, perhaps you should expect that only uh, perhaps two to three are doing the main work in terms of expectation management. Um, then you have the, what we call the active community members uh, who join a lot of interactions, like if you think of the C3 call as a community, uh, people who take part in the three, uh, C3 calls, who discuss later on, on uh, connect, who ask questions on, and so on. These are much less in terms of the 99-1 rule, it's uh, the 9%. And then you have a core group, uh, a core team, how we call it, of community managers who really drive the community forward, who define the goals, who uh, start new activities, welcomes new members, and so on. And this is called the, uh, the core team of community managers here in this very simple model. Uh, what helps? Often uh, you have this saying of the grassroots movement needs light from above to grow. Uh, to let the communities always think about how they fit in the organization. So there's this idea of a management sponsor. And when uh, people are designing communities uh, in, this, in the checklist that we have, uh, we let them think about uh, what organization goal uh, does the community support and try to search for a management sponsor so it gets easier to get resources, mainly time, perhaps if you have community meetings or events, also money to uh, support these activities. Yeah, this also just as a reference, you see the source at, at the uh, bottom, there's a lot of material on what communities of practice are, what the uh, major benefits are for the organization, uh, what are the uh, critical success factors, what is the, the process of starting such communities, what are the key elements? I think this is important uh, to let the community members think about the domain, like what is the, uh, the topic and, and the subtopics the community is about, and the community itself, the members and the relationships, how they interact with each other, and the practice, which Wenger defines as the, the body of knowledge, so to say, it might be about methods or cases or methodologies or whatever the community is about. And the better you shape these elements and have a clear picture of what these three elements for the community are, the easier it's to get you know, new members and also to get uh, purposeful activities in the community. So at the bottom here, you have the link oh. as well. You can follow this and find a PDF version of that. Katrin, did you want to say? Yes. Yeah. Did you want to add something? No. no I was somebody else. No. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay, then there's also in the literature sort of a life cycle idea. Uh, such communities uh, typically run through a life cycle of a potential phase where people think it might be a good idea to have a cross-departmental community, for example. Then perhaps you have a hype phase and the community is emerging, it's maturing, uh, it's running, and also in the end transforming. Transforming might mean that uh, the community has fulfilled its purpose and it just disappears or the core team has no resources anymore, then the community disappears as well and has to be reactivated. Uh, sometimes communities uh, merge, for example, in the field of agile communities or innovation communities. We saw this a lot in the last years, uh, like you have a scrum community, an agile community, and a safe community, and they like learn that they have a lot of things in common and to have a greater uh, uh, potential number of members, they merge. But also you have this if you, if you have a, um, a topic that grows where you have a lot of people, uh, then it might be that the community splits up into uh, several sub-communities, similar to uh, how the dynamics on an org chart are working, for example. Also here, I don't go in, uh, into detail. There's a good paper I've linked here on ResearchGate. You find the link in the footer. Yeah, so with all that uh, theoretical fundament, we like created a, a community of practice quick, chart, uh, quick start checklist uh, that we gave all the members in the, in the pilot. We also ran workshops 
so they should uh, have to uh, should have a look at the community of practice guide. They should join the network of community managers. We had a bi-weekly call where we met, mostly virtual. Uh, the kickoff was in person. And final workshop will also be in person. Uh, we also linked. Uh, there's a, a German in German language a crash crash course for internal community management where you can subscribe and then you get for 30 days. Uh, email learning nugget uh, to learn things. Uh, we have created a canvas where you can with post-its like configure your community. Uh, people should uh, have a look at the basic connect functionalities. Here it's uh, Scheffler Connect, the internal social network based on Jive. And what we will talk later on, uh, this community of practice toolbox uh, with individual tools and methods that community managers can use to run their community. And so on and, and so on. You can also have a look uh, at that afterwards, just to give you an impression of this canvas, uh, where you think about target groups of the communities, objectives, which infrastructure to use, uh, what are the key activities, uh, personal resources, what are partners in the organizations and interfaces, and of course the, the efforts and the benefits on the personal level, like what's in it for the community members, but also what's in it for the organization to convince uh, department leads, for example, to give uh, people time to go in the community. And all the, I think we have nine or eight pilots. Uh, we had nine and now it's eight, I think, on dropped. Uh, they started to, with, just with post-its and wrote on the, on the canvas to configure their community, talk with uh, potential uh, members and so on, and refine their approach, so to say. There are also like a lot of templates you can see here that are linked in the presentation internally, so you can't follow these links, uh, where we try to give them um, templates that help to uh, shape the activities in the first month, like have the idea to run in sprints, like an agile project, have core activities for the individual month, months, do a retrospective to learn what works, what does not work, because uh, uh, at the beginning, you have perhaps you have good ideas, but it's not working, or uh, people don't uh, accept the activities, or you learn that it uh, takes too much effort, you don't have enough resources. So it's a good idea to have this inspect and adapt cycle on a monthly and a quarterly basis. Yeah, so now as a, uh, oops, what's this? Uh, as a final thing uh, that I want to show before we hand over to the to the pilots, that they can uh, talk a little bit about what happens in their pilots, uh, we created a, a community of practice toolbox where we have also one pages in the community to give them a few ideas what you can do in the community, like run and ask me anything. Perhaps you know that for an hour in the community, you have an expert or a leader uh, that participants can raise questions. Uh, run a blog parade where you ask a question in, uh, in a blog and uh, people can answer it or like it or share it. Um, make community calls like the one we are doing. Uh, running physical meetups to bring people together and let trust emerge. Uh, make podcasts. We have one community, one podcast community and one community who started to run podcasts with their experts. Uh, run video conferences. Uh, create a knowledge map where you have an overview of the domain of the community uh, and also perhaps uh, familiar with most of you, uh, foster the, the mindset of working out loud so that the community members start to post also small nuggets and contents in the community so you get, uh, you're not in a situation that you as a community manager have to post everything and all the members are only consuming, so to say. Okay, this is just a quick overview of this toolbox. We'll come back to that later on. And now I would handle over to Sandra. Yes, mm, to me. Sandra, yeah. Yes. Okay. Perhaps a few minutes, three minutes or so, uh, talk a little bit about your pilot and your community. Yes, of course. So my name uh, is Sandra Ott. I'm here in the Scheffler Academy um, in for Scheffler. So my topic is are the trainers at Scheffler uh, worldwide. We have uh, around 1000 trainers, internal trainers, which do that part time. And so the idea was here to connect them uh, worldwide. So they are on all continents. Um, in a lot of countries, um, but we don't have a connection or we did not have a connection so far. So that's the target for the community. Um, give them a home. Um, 
and also give them support from um, here from the corporate, but also that they can help each other um, with question and answers because we are such a big company. So I think someone always will know the answer to my question. So here, um, that's the first page of the community, which you see on that slide. So on the left side, we just added here our um, direct support because I think when you are a trainer, you go to a page, what you look is for support. And then here it's like, you can ask the community or you have training design informations or you will find some methods for your moderation in the toolbox. Um, then exactly. And below, um, we are also working on more collaborative learning formats. And so they can also find information about working out loud, the podcast and the bar camp um, underneath. In the middle part, I think the middle part is for us the active part, because I think for me, it's always good. You come to a page and you see something, uh, something is going on there. So I think most important things are in uh, blue, because I think that's not when you look at it, that's what catches you. So this community is just two weeks old. So it's more um, also please join in how it works. Please press the button so that you get the information and also information about the back we will do and then just underneath its blocks um, um, are the blocks um, which uh, welcomes them and which um, which are new so that they always know what's the newest uh, what's the newest information and on the right hand side um, you see the contact um, and also the target of this group and also the the information or the the to see okay please write your own blog that's not just uh, a Sandra blog or a Sandra community um, that's a community um, for all so if you have information free free to um, to add them here because it's yeah valuable for all the others. Okay, very good. Are they so, really taking time to fill out uh, those uh, forms? Um, with forms? With forms, I think it's meant the uh, the templates like the canvas and the roadmap. Yes, we did that as a preparation. And to me, it was uh, very helpful to get a clear picture how we want uh, to set up the global trainer community. So it helped um, yeah, to define the focus or the target um, and also that it should be actively and also helped us with the um, with the things we will do. So we already set up some meetups to welcome, but also meetups for training design. So trainers can dial in and ask about uh, training design, whatever they want. want. Um, and I think the second part, which we don't see here is on a second page, that's the community where they re really can ask their questions. Um, I think, yeah, we can see it here. On the left hand side, it's like ask your questions. So it's like, if they have questions about different topics, they can click and then, um, a template will open, they can just write in a few sentences um, and then find it in the middle part and then when it's answered, they can mark it, it's answered. So it's uh, good for them now. So that was very in good help for us um, that we come to the structure which we have today. Okay, thank you very much. I think in terms of our time schedule, we should go on to the second example. I think if we have time left, we can have another uh, round of questioning after the breakout groups. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hand over to Anne. No, to Sandra, that's me. To Sandra again, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. So that's a community of my colleague Anne. Um, she's responsible for the podcast here at Scheffler. Um, as you see, they, our communities have uh, kind of the same structure. Um, so here, for her community, I think what's the specialty on the left hand side, you find uh, the new podcasts. So uh, whenever she uploads a new podcast, and that's a lot, um, you will find them here and get informed about um, about the new topics. For example, here you have the trainer at Scheffler, but that's another that's another topic. We have like a lot about learning. Um, but also some external podcasts, which some Scheffler employees um, did inside. Um, so that you get connected and in the middle part you will find uh, some information about what is a podcast what you need to do it um, how to create it and then also the elements because we do not do everything here so we also want um, to engage the um, departments that they can do that by their own cool 
Okay, was okay. there a question which I didn't see or? No, in the chat not. Okay, good. I think Achim, uh, we leave the question for the end or? Yes, uh, if they don't fit in really directly, we leave them for the end. Okay. Okay, then we have a third example. Yes, right. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, I'm Andreas and I represent my boss, Markus, today. Um, our team has six members and is responsible for Nova Grinding Machines at Scheffler. Um, we are in contact with our colleagues in the respect Effective plan maintenance and technology departments all over the world. In order to be able to provide this support in the best possible way, we founded our S-Connect um, group, Ask the Nova Control Experts. Um, it is shown on the slide. So, um, two questions. Um, why our group is a closed group. Uh, all shared information is addressed only to responsible persons or those who have a direct relation to NOVA machines. These include the maintenance staff and grinding technologists. Who is doing what? Our NOVA team is the community manager, provides basic information like manuals as an example. All members of our community can ask questions and also answer each other questions. It's a kind of safe space and enables us direct low-level support. Our main point of view is to form a strong international community. Our members should exchange information on a short way to help each other and not to publish glossy documents. That's not on our focus. The second big benefit is the networking aspect. Such a community enables us to improve cooperation between production and development. This is a big goal for us. At next, um, I would like to give you some examples of the tools we used actually. One of the main contents is the box to ask questions that is shown in the center of our site. If a question on a similar topic has already been answered, this answer will be suggested and a possible, possibly linked document will be displayed. The information history is stored in the news feed below. We also used a tool for event announcements to inform about upcoming trainings and um, important fairs. Furthermore, um, we produce blogs and podcasts to summarize uh, current projects. Okay, um, yeah, but it was from my side. Uh, that brings me to the end. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for your attention. Very good, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you to you, Andreas, and Sandra also. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There's also in the slides the contact of uh, Katrin and some of the guys who presented are on uh, Connect as well. So if you have questions regarding the cases, I think they can uh, send it to you, Katrin. And uh, mm -hmm. perhaps if we have sure. uh, time at the end of this session, we can come back to the cases as well. But for now, the idea is that we, uh, we all split up. We are 51 people. Uh, and our goal is that we want to get a clearer picture of what are the tools and methods that you use in your communities on a daily basis. What, is, what are good practices? What's used a lot? What would you suggest? And since this is very uh, heavy to discuss in such a big group, we would now split up into breakout groups of about five to six people. And we give you around 10 minutes, I think, we're a little bit over time, uh, to on the one hand discuss which of the tools and methods you saw in the Scheffler COP toolbox are relevant for your practice too. Um, uh, discuss which additional tools and methods you use in, the, uh, in your community activities, like in your community. And you can, can add these tools and methods just in this Mentimeter that we added. Mentimeter is just a, a website if you follow this link, uh, menti.com, uh, you get on a page like this, and there you have to enter the code. Uh, the code is over here. It's just 416693. Achim, I think, posted it in the chat already. Uh, you find it there. And uh, after the 10 minutes, uh, you will get in the breakout rooms a 60 second signal. So we come back in the, in the plenum, like in this, in this big group again. Yeah, so this means if I press the button in a, in a second, 
then you just transfer to a smaller Zoom room. It's just the same video conferencing room that we use now. Uh, it's just only the four or five or six of you inside. Just open the uh, open menti, everybody of you. Uh, discuss what are the tools methods you like and you use in addition add that to Menti and we will then when we come back in the big group have uh, the result as a word cloud and uh, we will show this and uh, Rebecca uh, will re reflect on that and, and Achim and then we can uh, we'll have a few minutes left for discussion yeah fine for everybody and also if there are open questions we can address them in the discussion right so now the experiment starts. I open the breakout room feature and I will split uh, us up in nine rooms uh, with four to five participants each and the process now starts. So people are beginning to come back, 20 seconds to go. Was a group productive, Michaela? <laughs> it was, excuse me, I used the break Very to good. have a, a piece of banana. <laughs> <laughs> can you see the, the results of the of the Mentimeter? Yes, I can. <laughs> Just like that. Genau, and I think now we will be able to get back. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you again. <laughs> Hey everybody! Das habe ich noch nie <laughs> Beam me oh, up, Scotty. Sehr <laughs> 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 yeah, geil, voll cool. Irgendwas haben wir verpasst. Erzählt mal, was haben wir verpasst? Genau. Ach, das ist nur das Ungewohnte. Also, dass man so, so rigoros im Wort mm. abgeschnitten wird, das passiert mir eigentlich nur beim Kunden. <laughs> well, you, you should have got a, got a 60 seconds warning, did you yeah, get yeah. Yeah. Ja, wer nimmt denn sowas ernst? Ja. <lacht> ja, in American Football, they take it very seriously. Ja, ich bin, I'm not in the football. <lacht> Just working. The stand-up is 15 minutes, it's 15, not 16. Was so, it really 15 minutes? Pardon? Not this Was one. Was it really 15 minutes? Ah, uh, not really. We, uh, had a, we were uh, one or two minutes over time, so about 13 or something like that. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay, so I would, uh, I think you can see the result, the word cloud of all the things you entered in the Menti, and I would hand over to, uh, I think, Rebecca and or Akim to uh, talk a little bit about the result. Yeah, thank you, Simon. So if you're still typing in your, your Menti, although, uh, yeah, your, your uh, work group session has been closed, you can still finish the Menti and share your results with us. Yes, yeah, so it looks like a like a big uh, toolbox. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Oh, I can't hear you, but Rebecca. It's we lost her, right? Okay, can she, you hear? Yeah, she just froze. She she froze. Um, okay, can uh, someone ch uh, tell her via chat, or I can? Yes, I I write her. I write her in the chat. Okay. Um, I think it's quite astonishing, like uh, the, in the word cloud you see here, the, 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 uh, the ideas, the tools that have mentioned most frequently are bigger than the other ones. I'm uh, really surprised that what I typed, use case template, obviously was typed in by, by many others as well. Um, we discussed it in our group, for instance, uh, what we meant was, uh, a specific, I mean, a template or more templates, a set of templates that are specific to specific uh, to uh, use cases of communities. For example, the community of practice use case, or maybe the um, event community use case, or whatever use cases you can think of. Um, is that the same? What did the others think uh, with use case template? Uh, the ones who typed this in. Anyone else who typed in use case templates, for instance? Okay, but even the bigger uh, thing is podcasts. Um, 
who typed in podcast and would like to say why it's important or why do you want this uh, in your community? You can just unmute yourself and, and tell it. There's also something happening in the chat, but I think it's better if you unmute yourself. Yeah, it's better. Perhaps I can, I can say one or two sentences since I'm a very big podcast fan. Uh, and really like it that uh, podcasts and also videos, we have videos somewhere, uh, seems to be an emergent trend because it, it, in contrast to text and, and blogs and so on, uh, it's a really authentic medium to communicate with other community members, to let them tell their stories. For example, on Monday on the Audi uh, bar camp, we did a podcast in a live session with the, with the guides with the guide network and where they where they told their stories and a lot of the guides talked about their stories before in a blog uh, or wrote something uh, on it in a discussion forum but it's much livelier if they're just uh, able to tell their story and you can listen to it in, in, in their own voice but i would have one provocative question <laughs> that's uh -oh. about the use case the use case of podcasts in within companies i mean I understand it if I uh, listen to podcasts while driving. So that's uh, something I do um, as a second, uh, not as a second screen, but as, as a second activity. Um, how's the use case of podcasts within companies? Uh, well, I mean, well, typically it's, it's uh, just the same mostly because people are uh, commuting to their work and uh, they are traveling back home and they are on a business trip and they move on the on the area of the company with the bus from place A to place B or from workshop A to workshop B. And this is just a very good time to listen to podcasts and you can't watch a video because otherwise you mm -hmm. fell down the stairs, for example. So I think the use case isn't, isn't very different to private mm -hmm. listening to podcasts. You can just bring it to places where you are not getting with text or video. Yeah, and, but uh, um, technically speaking, where do you provide uh, these audio files? I mean, usually you provide them in the intranet or uh, are they yes, yes. The member phones yes. or whatever? How do they come into your car? <laughs> well, in the, in so the at, case, at Tesla, yeah. we, we just upload the, the podcast files to our social intranet and with one or two clicks, you can listen to them. They just upload so it for to Tesla employees. Yeah, right. Sorry, Simon. Yeah, you just upload it to Jive as an attachment of a blog post. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Volkswagen, for example, is doing the same. And I think in connection, mm -hmm. you can even set the flag in, in a blog that this is a podcast, and then you get a valid podcast feed, which you can uh, which you can subscribe to with just a normal podcast app on iOS. And they're the first companies like Siemens, for example, they, are, uh, they uh, have a project to build their internal Spotify. Wow. Distribute podcasts internally with all the security stuff and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else who wants to share experiences with podcasts or other of these uh, terms in the, in the cloud? Mm -hmm. um, yes, from from oh, sorry Anya, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> from Conti side, we also provide some podcasts. So we have first uploaded them to uh, connections as files. Uh, the only thing is there, you need to download them before you go, for example, uh, in the train. And um, therefore, now we have transferred these podcasts now uh, to Microsoft Stream because we are using Office 365. And there you have the great advantage if you have, for example, also the app installed on your mobile device that you can down or that you can save it and then um, listen to it when you're offline. And that's really good. Mm -hmm. Just to give another example, which yeah. kind of tool you could also use. Okay, thank you. Um, I mean, it's the same with videos. Um, just videos, you can't do it um, like as a second activity. But um, there's also other things in here, forums, blogs, wikis, surveys, canvas, anyone who has experiences with uh, those tools. 
my experience with uh, surveys is that this uh, most of the time works really well because the, the effort for people is quite uh, limited. At least in our tool, they just need to click something and share their opinion. So for me, um, in my communities, it was always a great uh, tool for activation and also to find out what kind of topics could be interesting for the community members. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so interactivity with uh, surveys uh, promote interactivity. Is that the same? How do you do it with podcasts, by the way? I mean, people listen to podcasts. Do they also start uh, comment, uh, posting comments? Do you achieve that in a social intranet? It's about the same ratio, perhaps a little bit less than with blogs. Because when you, when you read a blog, you're close to the form where you can type your comment. If you listen to the podcast on a podcast app, you have to go back to the community to post your comment there. So I think that's the reason why mm -hmm. uh, you have a little less comments on podcasts than on blogs. Mm, if, if you're using stream and upload the podcast there, then you can um, comment directly yeah. underneath the podcast. So that's in this case then better but uh, so far um, I think we, we don't receive so many comments we receive more comments underneath the videos and also likes and discussions mm -hmm. and also Gerhard posted in the chat they they also try stream as a podcast platform. I think at the moment you have to uh, transform your video uh, your audios into video to upload it yes but exactly yeah What's good there is that you have an automatic uh, uh, subtitling feature there. So if you upload uh, material in English or Spanish, I think it's at the moment, you get subtitles in about 60 languages if you want. It's really cool. Yes. And transcription on, on, on screen is okay so far for, for English, but um, to have a... Hmm. <laughs> A really good um, um, subtitle, you, you need to rework that. And um, one other cool feature on stream is uh, you can translate the transcript file to other languages and then have um, that um, yeah, not automatically transcribed um, languages also available as subtitles. I, I tried that for some of those videos, but the effort is getting quite high for to, to have uh, really many different languages provided. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see a lot of treasures in that cloud, uh, but also the treasure uh, personal uh, discussions like Mittagessen, like lunch, Gespräche auf Augenhöhe, so uh, talks on the same level. Um, uh, it's also interesting, I think it's also um, important for the success of communities to really have that personal. Um, uh, discussions. Hmm. Maybe one more idea I'd like to change. Uh, something uh, we tried recently in a community is a challenge. Maybe some of you know this uh, ice bucket challenge where you, um, I think there was two or three years ago in Facebook, where you nominated people and they put some uh, cold water over uh, their Hats. So we did that, but without the water. So we just nominated uh, people for a case, and the hashtag was um, proud uh, to be ZF. And it was about, um, yeah, why people are proud to, to work, work here, just to look more at the positive aspects. Didn't work as well as I thought, but can we maybe ID an idea for uh, some of you for one of the topics? Um, I think could be nice for activation. I will try it again. Okay, ice bucket challenge. Ice bucket right. challenge. Without the water, you just have the Without ice. Water. It sounds like a lot of pain. Uh, there's one, one more question by Piotr in the chat. He, he says if somebody can say a few words about MS Teams. Uh, I think it popped up in the, in the word cloud as well. Uh, MS Teams is coming at the moment as part of Office 365. And uh, I think in contrast to Yammer, it's more like a collaboration platform for groups of people you know already, like for projects or departments. But in the end, it's, uh, I think you can run teams up to 5,000 5, people 
you can publish a code to enter a team to the internet or somewhere. So uh, perhaps in the future, Microsoft team will become more and more a community platform as well. Perhaps this might be a topic for a future C3 call. If I have a look at the watch and see the time's running. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Let's, uh, what do we do for follow up? Uh, but I don't, I need to share, I think. Um, yeah, hold on for a second. We will make the, the links available on Twitter, but also on our sites. You can go to community on the E, but we will distribute these links afterwards. So um, there you will find all the information about uh, future calls and about um, the call itself um, and the information about where to come to get the recording. And what I would highlight to you as well, you can decide um, or you can determine what will be the future topics of our cross company community manager call. If you go to that uh, page over here, yeah, it just doesn't let me. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I sent someone birthday greetings. <laughs> also good. Also I important. Really has some problems with my internet connections right now. So nice puppy. <laughs> okay, where was it? Um, the topic marketplace. The topic marketplace. That's where you can suggest topics. You see, Steffi has already uh, suggested a topic. You can uh, like the topics that we suggested or that anyone else suggested, and so we can see what uh, what are your preferences in terms of uh, topics for our future calls. So thank you very much for participating. We will publish everything. Um, yeah, and hope to see you next time again on January. I think the 16th, am I right? Bye. Yes, January the 16th will be our next uh, C3 call. The topic's still open, so if you suggest good topics, we can grab that. Mm -hmm. So, bye-bye, have a nice... Perfect. thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 Thank you. Bye-bye, nice bye. afternoon. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks, bye.